web fonts. Very exciting um, because now with web fonts, you can actually set a font on your server and have the browser download that font directly from the server and render it in the web page. So this means um, you don't have to uh, make sure that you've got just a very limited set of fonts that are available on most computers. Um, you can pick a font that you want that's very unique and uh, set it and it can be downloaded and run in the browser. Um, and this also is sort of like the workaround in the past has been to make an image that is text, which is terrible for accessibility reasons and a lot of other reasons. The best you can come to is sort of a, the text replacement with CSS. Um, but now you can actually have just the, the font itself. Um, so this syntax right here is this little at, and it um, includes the uh, font uh, first with a font family name that you specify. So you can actually call it whatever you want. Uh, it makes sense to call it the name of what the font actually is and then the source for it, and it will um, grab the uh, font file that you've got, and the browser now will know how to uh, deal with it. Um, there's an extra period there. Um, so there's been a bit of a, a, a fight about which sort of fonts to uh, support, um, but it's kind of settled in on the true type and open type fonts, which are supported by just about everything. Um, Internet Explorer in the past supported a proprietary font sort of uh, a way of doing this, um, and then Firefox added support for it as well. But um, it's probably best looking forward in the future to just use one of these two types of fonts. And uh, let's get right into the code and show what it looks like. So this is a H1 element that we're going to want to have a very unique looking font for. Here's our code. Um, no, no CSS really right here. This is our H1 with a class of web font. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually import two fonts. Um, this one here, which is just in the same folder, so I don't have to specify a complicated URL. And this one fell. Um, and so uh, you you may want to import multiple fonts, and then um, as you're uh, actually uh, putting them in your code, um, use a font family, and then you can use the sort of fallback method. So if for some reason the browser doesn't support OTF or it doesn't support web fonts, it'll fall back to a default font. Um, and you can even have, uh, so I can just copy this, and I can have uh, multiple of my imported fonts to see if they work. Um, so, for example, some uh, fonts have PC and Mac versions, so you could do that. Fell, like if I had Pels, fell PC and then fell Mac, um, so it would fall back to it. Um, so now what this does is I've set, I've imported these fonts, um, I've set a name for it, and now that font name is available um, for my H1 in the web font class. And I've also set the size to be very large so you can kind of see all the detail. So this is not an image. Normally when you see something like this on a web page, you um, can be pretty sure that it's an image. Um, but this is actually text. Um, so this is much more flexible than if I had an image because um, not only does it resize and I don't have to download an image, but I can work with this text um, the way I would work with any other text. Um, so that means I can have underlining, hover effects, um, like I can italicize it and all the other things and some of the uh, things that I'll show in this lesson um, like uh, like text uh, back shadowing and things like that are all now going to be available to this text and it's text again it's not an image and that's very cool it's applause worthy that we can now deal with this uh, sort of web font importing we've been waiting for it for a long time um, it's been around since CSS 2.1 and it's only recently come to the point where we can really use it